So in companies, if you work in a team, there is no way that you cannot skip to use any version control system. It, it, Microsoft, there are several Microsoft source set, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, almost same, but if you know one, then you can <coughs> uh, use others. So if you go to, yeah, so there are a few videos, like if you go to my channel and then see, there are only nine videos, it will take an hour or two hours just to practice. And then if you watch this video one time, then you can start using GitHub. And for instance, if you go to my GitHub account, that's a github.com slash csit at experts, then I, you will see that I have some repositories. You see 24 repositories so far I have maybe. And then among these, I have uploaded uh, <coughs> stack implementation, like implement stack separately. Implement singly linked list, implement QE, and implement doubly linked list. So if you clone these projects, so you will have all stack, QE, and linked list projects, complete program. All these programs run. I have tested, but there are some scopes to update it. Uh, okay, so <coughs> In our last class, we got stuck with something. <coughs> okay, so this is the node class that is same thing. So here in in my individual project, I put all of the class all of the classes in individual uh, files. So this is why I need public class node. So that I put node in just not the Java. And I have my QE. Okay, so the in a QE class, <coughs> you know, <coughs> QE, okay, it's in QE, it's called in QE. Okay, that is called, that is most likely with a uh, uh, tag peak, uh, like pop operation, uh, sorry, push. Not this is likely. I'll tell you. I'll tell you later. Okay, that question I meant. Okay, so NQ is to enter an element in the queue. So since in a queue we add an element at the end, at the tail, so we will consider if the no, if the initially we will consider if my queue is empty, an empty queue. So for an empty queue, both top and tail will be null for an empty QE. So since for QE we add elements at the end, so this is why it is better to consider if tail equal to null. Here we could consider if top equal to null. If top equal to null, same thing. That means empty QE, but by convention in QE we add elements at the end, so it's better to use tail, to check tail. If tail equal to null, then will be top will be node and tail will be node. What is my node object over here? Is node object over here <coughs> with the constructor what I'm value and passing to this node. Okay, else else means if I have some elements in my QE, my QE is not an empty QE. Okay, then I have two lines of operation tail dot next will be node and tail will be node. So you see that this line, this line is common for both empty uh, QE and non-empty QE. So you can put this line, move over here at the end, and then you don't need here. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so if I have, if I have a QE, okay, for instance, this is my, for instance, not this one. So for instance, this is my QE. 
So this is my Q, this is my Q, it's a pipe. The Q is a pipe, right? It's a pipe. So elements are coming from this way and going out through this way, right? So if my Q is empty, it has nothing. So for instance, that means that means top, both top and it has no node, but it has an imaginary node. Okay, so if okay, so if you have a bank account, so if you do not have any money in your account, how many money, how how much money do you have in your account? Zero. So zero is a symbol, right? Zero is a symbol that represents nothing. So for object-oriented programming, a null represents a non-existent <coughs> uh, object. An object that does not exist. So for instance, I have an imaginary object, null object. I don't have this object. But let us imagine I have an object. So if I don't have this object, then what is my top? Top will be null. Right? So any object, every node has two things. One is top, another is tail. Every node has two things, right, on top and tail. So but I, since I don't have this node, so this is why I have my top equal to, my top equal to, <coughs> that means node dot top equal to null. Okay, this is null. And my top equal to null or also tail equal to null. I say top is this side. And I can say uh, tail is this side. Tail, tail equal to also null. Okay. Tail equal to null. So if I say my top equal to null or tail equal to null, that is my Q is empty. So this is where it says tail equal to null. Okay, so actually, uh, tail, I can put consider top equal to null or tail equal to null. Yes. But for a circular one, do we still have a tail? <coughs> when it's circular, going all around? Circular uh, QE? I don't know about that. I need to do research. <coughs> in, in my syllabus, we don't have circular uh, QE, maybe. Okay. If you need, then I can do research and we can discuss next class. Okay, so that means if my tail equal to null, that means I have no element exist. So that means my top will be node. So this the element, whatever the element I will have, so that put I will note, this node I will put, and I will assign to that one top and also on tail. Okay, and then the second case, if I have, for instance, I have an element, at least one element in my QE. So then, where I will add the next element? My next element will come here, right? My next element will come here. So then, tail dot next, that means my, when I have one element, then I have my tail equal to node. That means tail dot next, that means node dot next. This means node. So when I have one element, I'm saying tail equal to node. That means when I add one more element, I will say that tail dot next, that means node dot next, my previous node. Node means my previous node, dot next, this one, this place, will be replaced by will be filled by a new node. This is my new node. My new node is here. This one, my new node. Will come here. Okay. And then I will have tail equal to node. So for instance, now, previously when I had one node, one node at least, or previous node, then my tail was here. But now this time my tail will be here. The node I added. My tail will back, come back. Yes. So why is that last uh, part necessary to tell you which 
Sorry. Yeah, the tail equal to node. This is two things, two operations you need in order to add. You need to do both. You need to do this, this, and this both. So I I like you to clone this project and run it and make some changes and see that it works, whether it works. So if it does not work, then definitely you will understand that it there is something wrong, right? Until you see, sometimes you do not believe me. Even I do not believe. Okay, so that's it. So please practice for stack, QE, and link list, uh, link list and stack and QE operations. In your next test, you must have questions about stack, QE, and link list, especially the add and delete operations. Okay. So, Yes, but delete operation I'm coming. So delete operation I'm coming to you. The delete operation is DQ. DQ, okay, so it's more likely uh, like a pop operation of stack, but the difference is that on the stack we know by convention, pop means getting the top element. For stack, we always get the top element, right? But, but for DQ, it is called we get from the tail. All eyes from the queue, you will get from tail. Okay, so, so although although function is similar, but by convention these are two things. So in the in the quiz there was a question for QE like in Q and pop are two basic operations. That was true. That was false. That was not true. Because pop is for stack. Well known. It is well known that pop is for stack operation. Yes. So, uh, going back to uh, NQ. Okay, so then I'll come back. So, in the, I'll come back to you. And then DQ operation is very simple. Okay, DQ operation is very simple. So, if your top equal to null, that means you do not have any element. Okay, so then make your tail equal to null, that means tail equal to null, then it's return. And if you have any element, then what it will do, just one line, top equal to top dot next. Just in order to, in order to, I'll come back to you, uh, in order to delete an element from the QE pipeline, just what you need to do. If you want to delete that, you want to delete this one, right? You want to delete this one. You want to delete that one. So if you want to delete that one, then what it will you will do? So when you had this one, then it was your top. But when you delete this one, then you will move your top just from here, from here to there. Just you will move. This is called top equal to top dot next. So that by deleting this, deleting means in stack and queue and link list, not actual deleting from your uh, memory. It's just delinking. So if you do not have any link, so that means nobody can access that. The program will lose accessibility. This delete, this delete does not mean that it is deleting from memory. That does not mean it means just it's delinking. Yes. Right, so there's nothing there. But, oh, there was something there. You're saying that the next node is the tail? Tail dot next equal to node. So there's something there, and so that's the tail? Is that what you're telling, telling me? I explained. Maybe you are not there. No, I'm here. <laughs> that's what I have a question about. I'm, I'm not clear about that. <coughs> so if you have two nodes there, is there something <coughs> node the tail, or the first node the tail? Every every uh, QE, there are two nodes. One is top and one is tail. Great. You can call head or tail. You can, instead of top, you can say head or tail. Okay. So then, if you have tail or head is null, that means you have no element. So then you have to 
update both your top and tail. That you are doing here if you do not have any element. But if you have on element, mm -hmm. then you need to move your tail. You need to move your tail, right? And you need to update your uh, the value of your new tail. There is a node, okay? So there is a node. For instance, there is a node. Okay, so it is, it is, for instance, I have only one node. So this is my top, right. and this is also my tail. Okay. If I want to add one more node, right. what I will do? I will create another space. Right. Okay, with, as my new node. And my, my, then, I will say tail dot next equal to node. Okay, so then, where this value will come so that since i whatever i will do here i will move my tail dot next whatever my tail dot over here tail dot next will come to a new position new value new memory space and on that memory space you will save the value of node Not going that way. But if I didn't tell that previous, would it take it? Would it do the same thing? You said previous. Okay. No, 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 no. What is the previous? No, could I say that? It's not previous. Fine. Yes, I think you have to use a, a doubly linked list to make your review. <coughs> do I have previous over here? Okay. Do I have previous here? Where did you get previous? If, if, no, if, if, I was saying it's maybe it's the wording that. So you can, if you do not understand that way, so there is no previous over here. There is no previous here. So in my node, I have a, I have a next node. I have only next. Okay. So uh, I really like you, everybody, to practice. Without practicing, theoretical knowledge is not sufficient for understanding this. Okay, so, uh, okay, so tonight, tonight we will start a new section, it's called exception handling, okay, and then according to our schedule, we have your test three, that will be one on November 6th, this date is fixed, okay. November 6th, and the elements will be week from 7 to 10. That means we cover reference parameters and regression, link list, and stack QE. This will be for your test 3 on November 6th. Okay, there will be no change on, uh, without any exception. <coughs> Okay, then according to my, uh, okay, let's here. So here I have today, I have to come, I have to start exceptions. Okay. Okay, so exceptions are kind of errors, but not exactly errors. Okay, the so exceptions are kind of errors, but not exactly errors. In our programming, we always face errors. There is no programmer that can say that I don't have any, I do not do any mistake or I don't face any error in my program. Okay, so everybody does mistake. And so the, in programming, we say called two errors, we say define uh, errors and exceptions. Okay. Error means mean you know ahead of time what is your, your mistake. Okay. So in my program, so for instance, but exception means you do not know ahead of time what is your mistake or or, or what kind of error you will face or what kind of uh, mistake you will face while running your program. 
okay so errors can occur in both in compile time and run time and exceptions are always occur in run time so if you face any exception any error during your compile time compile time means when you write your program for instance uh, so i have put this exception handling course in in my CSE 1322 review project in the package exception handling. So give attention. You don't need to copy. You don't need to take note. So give attention. Just here in order to learn. Okay. For instance, my this program. So exception means if I do a mistake. So error means if I do a mistake, for instance, instead of typing int, I am if I type int t t. Okay. But for instance, if I type in i in uppercase n t. So this is an error. And this is a compile time error. So because when we type in program in Eclipse or like modern uh, IDE. At the time, as soon as we compile, as soon as we type in, it compiles. Program started compiling. So it becomes too fast. This is why we do not realize. So this is why it compiles time programming. But like 20 years ago, when I first learned Java first time, and then I wrote my first Java book, then we did not have Eclipse at that time. So we wrote program, Java program using Notepad. And then we wrote the complete program and then compiled it. Then after compiling, we found error. Okay, and those errors came on like on, on Linux DOS terminal. It was very difficult. Remember that is difficult how to track these errors. So, but nowadays we have we are lucky that we have Eclipse, NetBean. And as soon as you see that you do some mistake in compile in compile time, this or writing mistake, this is called compile time error. So you know ahead of time your error. So if you have any compile time error, so for instance one compile time error, you will show a code over here, a cross mark over here. This is this is the symbol you have error here, either here or at above here. Okay. And then, if you go also to the package, you will see an error mark on the package level. And if you go on the top SRC source, you will see that your folder level error. And even at the top level, in your project, you will see error. So your program will not run. Even if you try to run this program, okay, it will not run because it says that error exist in GQR project. So it will not run even. Okay, so this is called compile time error. Okay, so if then if it's lucky, it's better to have compile time error. So you can fix it. But sometimes it may happen that you do not have any, so for instance, I have fixed this, okay? I don't have any error over here, okay? But still I don't know. My program may face an error. Okay, so that error, if I face, still if I face any error, that we will say runtime error. So at the time of run, if I run my program, and if I, if I face any error, so you see that it is getting runtime error and it is showing an exception. So exceptions are runtime error. Okay, all exceptions are runtime. It says that whatever is, is my error master. It says that exception is thread main. Every Java is a multi-threaded program and then its main thread runs, okay? And it says at the bottom of this line, it says on this line, if we, if we go all the way in, it says division by zero. Because what is happening here, I have my z value equal to 15, okay, and my, I'm dividing z by 
y minus 2 times of x. y minus 2x. My y value is 10, right? Over here, my y value is 10, and 2 times x value is 5. So 2 times x equal to 10, and y equal to 10. So 10 minus 10 will be 0. So although I don't have any compile time error over here, so while I'm running this program, it will make an exception over here. It will make an error over here. It's divided by zero. We cannot divide any number by zero. That becomes an infinite or undetermined result. Right? So even I don't have any compile time error, I have an error ultimately. This is called runtime error, or we say that is an exception. So in our program, we, in order to develop better programs code and better application, robust and secure and uh, better application, we need to know about exception handling. Okay, so this is our topic tonight. We will discuss about exception handling. So an exception is an indication of a problem that occurred during program's execution. That means execution time, run time. Okay. So we need to know exception handling in order to resolve this exception. Exception handling enables clear, robust, and more fault-tolerant programs. So exception handling will help improve your program's uh, fault tolerance. False means if you fault, give an error, then you will resolve it. So sometimes you know, the, if you do, if you face, I face actually that. For an interview question, sometimes people will ask, give me an example in real life. Okay? The, your manager or the hiring manager, he is an expert, but he will ask you silly question. Okay? He will ask you, the, give me an example of an object in real life. Give me an example. He says, you may, I may ask you, give me an example of exception handling in real life. That, you, that he or she will ask a question, okay, I don't know anything about programming. Tell me about something in real life that is exceptional. Ex how do we handle exception? Let us get, get a similar example so that we understand what is exception handling. For instance, think about a highway, okay, or maybe there are many highways like, like this, okay single way, one way, and <coughs> so this is income, left side is incoming and maybe right side is outgoing, right, okay. So then, what will happen if there is an accident on either way, either side? That line is closed, that line is closed right, okay. That line will be closed, and then the, definitely there will be traffic in the highway, right? So then if there is an accident over here, so then this line will be stuck, so people will be using, we need to, that is an exception. So accident, for instance, an accident is an exception, because you don't know ahead of time that you will face an, an accident. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, so the error will be a flat tire. That means if you have ahead, before you enter into road or highway, if you have a flat tire, you will not enter into road. That is an error. Okay, if your engine does not start up, then that is an error. You know ahead of time. There is a compile time error. But for instance, your car is fine, you are driving, okay? If, while at any time, you may face an accident, right? So if you have an accident, that is an exception. Okay, so if an accident, if there is an accident happens, then we need to handle that one, right? So that means if there is an accident happen on this vehicle, so then this road will be, this side will be blocked. So then how do we, handle that situation in our daily life. Yes. 
Okay, so yes, we can uh, you can check many options that for instance, but another one of the options is that this line will be blocked. We all all incoming and outgoing vehicles will use right side, right? Another another side. This side, right? All incoming and outgoing vehicles will use this side. Okay, okay. So in order to resolve this kind of issues, like for instance, in modern highways have multiple lanes, right? So for instance, multiple lanes, if you have accident on this lane, you can use this lane. Next lane, you can if you can or you can use next lane, right? And there are more secure that nowadays for both sides there are uh, multiple lanes and there is a divider. Okay. So that means we ex we handle this ex roadside exception by using multiple lanes. Right. So if I have accident on the first lane, then I can use second lane. The second lane will be used, the third lane will be used. Okay. So this is kind of exception handling. Okay, and in modern highways or freeways, there is another alternative. Like people keep another extra lane free, that is called emergency lane, right? So no matter if accident happens, an accident happens or not happens. So this emergency lines is always keep free, right? So that all ambulance or uh, police vehicles can use that in an emergency, right? So actually, this we will we will simulate this multiple lanes as our cat statement, and actually this is the emergency lane. We call this one as uh, so in programming we say finally block. So. I will come later, okay? So I will come to this uh, this picture later. Okay, so what we have seen this in this program, still our program did not show any error message and compile time, but it showed an error message on runtime. So this is a, a, an exception. So in order to handle exceptions, all programming languages have some built-in classes, exception handler classes, that are called exception handler. So an exception handler, what does exception handler do? An exception handler handles the exception right way so that your next code, where your exception occurs, the next code can run. So that your program, entire program, cannot terminate. Okay. So there are several kinds of exceptions. Like for instance, we face regularly in our program is called arithmetic exceptions. That is exception. For instance, we showed divide by zero is an arithmetic exception. So it's a null pointer. Is another exception is null pointer exception. That is called if you do not have any object. Okay, if you do not have any object, but still you are doing, you are trying to do an operation based on that object. For instance, if your string is null, but if you want to get the length of the string, so you will get a null pointer exception because your still does your string does not exist. So if your string does not exist, that means it is null. Then how can I get its length? You cannot get its length, right? That is called null pointer exception. And there is another exception is for input mismatch. For instance, if you are asked to enter an integer, okay, but if you had entered a, a double type or a fluid type or a string type, that is called input mismatch. Okay, this is a number format exception. Uh, I don't have an example right now. 
and then uh, the next one is the area out of bound exception for instance if you go if you try to extract an element out of the array range out of the array length that is called array index out of bound exception you we will see that some of these exception in some programs okay so <clears throat> The concept of exception handling is that, okay, so if as a if performance task, that this is the pseudocode, okay, if the preceding task does not, the, did not execute correctly, then perform an error processing, okay, then go to the next step, next task. That means, exception handling means the piece of code that is making an exception or error, just skip it. And skip it and go to the next task. Do not start with that exception of, of that mistake. Use alternative routes. If you find an accident on your route, so still if you have alternative ways, then use alternative ways. And this is the pseudocode is simple. Okay, perform a task. If the task makes an exception, skip it or show an error message. Or is the error you are getting, and then go to the next step. So through exception handling. Programmers, what programmers uh, do, remove error handling codes from the main line of the program execution. Actually, we remove the, actually, main lines means actually on the queue, running queue. Just keep those aligns and then uh, show an appropriate message or what, what kind of exception you are facing. Show that one and go to the next. So exception handling uh, <coughs> reduces the likelihood that errors will be overlooked. So sometimes it's, it's a demerit of exception handling that sometimes if you have some course and then it makes, if you put that on exception, still you may have a way to fix it, but you are putting on that an exception bypassing that one. So this is why we need to be wise in doing exception handling. Do not put any code that you have a scope to fix it in your exception uh, block. Okay, so now let us see how do we do uh, exception handling, but before that, so this class, so uh, in Java and in Python and C Sharp, this, all, this programming languages have some built-in exception <coughs> Handler classes, okay. So, so among these, the exception is the base class and exception uh, exception class, runtime exceptions, and there are subclasses. So, this is, is this readable? This is not readable, okay. So, exception is mainly on Java and IO packages. So let me go to th this is not readable. So let me go to th this, uh, this. So it says that exceptions are actually Java dot in Java dot length package. We know that about object class, right? Object class is the great greatest parent class. Okay, and it has some exceptions throwable. This is the exception handler class throwable. And one thing that how do we know it is a class? They start with a lot, lot an upper upper case. The T is in uh, throwable, okay? And it has error and forget about this side and we will handle on that side. Okay, so the exception is throwable class, we say exceptions class, and there are exceptions, runtime exception and other exceptions. Let us see in more in depth. 
sorry, th this is uh, more readable. So in the object class, there are subclass throwable class. That subclass has exception class, and exception class has subclass runtime class. And I believe it will come here. IO exception, IO exception will come here. Okay, sorry, there is it. I will exception will come here and error will come here. Okay, so I just copied and paste, it did not work. Okay, and so you see that runtime exceptions have several exceptions arithmetic exception, array stored exception, index out of bound exception, null pointer exceptions, number format exceptions, class not found exceptions. <coughs> and no sub file exceptions, blah blah, like this. Okay, so in addition to these exceptions class, okay, we can create our new exception class. We will show, we will see that in next class how to create our own exception, exception class. Okay. So actually there are, these exceptions are, can be divided in two broad categories. One is sometimes it is it's called unchecked exception and checked exception. So unchecked exceptions are under the, under the error, under the error, error class and runtime exception class. Actually I did a, I did have a mistake over here. Uh, <coughs> Give me one second. Let me fix it, then it will be easy for you to understand. Uh, oh, still I have this. Okay, so if my I think if I do this way, then you will understand better. Okay, so it's, it's visible. Sexually class hierarchy is like this way. So I have my object class and the top, then it has subclass throwable, then it has subclass exceptions, and it has, okay, two kinds of exceptions, runtime exceptions and IO exceptions, okay? So runtime exceptions are several kinds, like arithmetic exceptions, array, uh, story, these are exceptions, okay? And also the error uh, over here. So the this, Exceptions are broadly classified in two types. It's called unchecked exception and checked exceptions. Okay, 
so that error exceptions under error class okay and runtime exception these are called unchecked exceptions that means you have to check this you have to fix this you have to write your own code in order to fix this so all these exceptions like this arithmetic index of uh, index of uh, bound exception null pointer exception if you face this or if you see there is a possibility of facing this any of this kind of exception then you have to check that one you have to take precaution okay so this is why it's called unchecked uh, exception okay and also the error error means compile time error if you face any compile time error mostly then you have to still fix it okay and for c sharp exception hierarchy class is like this way it has top level is exception then it's called application exception and system ex exception uh, so people who are taking c sharp class in your lab maybe you know, when you uh, uh, to your lab class then you will see that uh, this kind of i don't have uh, my <coughs> c sharp code over here so if i face my c sharp code then i will show you in depth i, I don't see that other hierarchical uh, child classes here so the now question is how do we handle exception we handle exception using try and cache block okay so in, 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 in java and c++ we handle exception using try and cache block in try block we put the code that may occur an exception we put the entire code that may cause an exception we put that code into try block and we use some cache statements cache blocks in within the cache block we put some codes to handle any exceptions that are generated or may generate in the try block due to exception So actually in the try block we bind the uh, <coughs> code that may find that may create a, an issue and if such an issue occurs then we do something like for instance we can say an error message that this of the message this of the error it generated or you can bypass or you can skip or we can take any <coughs> resolution you want that we put in cache block okay so main point here is the point at which an exception is called an exception is worker is called throw point so it is an interview question. So an interview map, what is called a throw point? Throw point is that the line or the instruction or the statement where an exception occurs. It's called throw point. And when a method called in a program detects a problem or an exception, then that method throws an exception. Okay, the point at which an exception occurs is called throw point. It's called a throw point. If an exception happens in the try block, program control immediately transfers to the first cache block matching the type of the thrown exception. After the exception is handled, program control resumes after the last cache block. So we will see this, explain this in a program. Okay, so let me go in the program. So, <coughs> this is the format of exception handling. We use a try block and we put the code within try block that may generate an exception. Okay. 
you are not sure that every time this code will uh, generate an exception but it may generate for instance if you have you are doing an array operation at some point you may exceed the boundary array boundary limit right so then you can put that code that your array operation code within try block and what will you want to do if that exception happens that code you will put in the uh, cache block So if an exception occurs within the try block, con controls immediately jumps into the cache block. Okay, for instance, you, if your try block has some codes, and if it finds an exception, then okay, Im it immediately jumps to the cache block without looking the next code, next uh, statement in the try block. Okay, so that means Okay, further instruction of the try block, okay, so no further instruction in the try block are executed. That means if you have multiple lines of code within your try block, and if find an exception, then the next block will not be executed. Next instructions will not be executed. And it will go to the cache statement, and after executing cache statement, it will go through the next statement. I want to show this in program instead of uh, teaching this theoretically okay so a cache block must follow a, a, a try block so if you do not put any try block you cannot put any cache block you have to put some try statement and then after that you will put some cache block Okay, so be prepared for your test questions. So you will be, you will be, you may be asked some features of your try block and catch block. What are the characteristics of try and catch blocks? Okay, is any interview questions or the your test questions? These are the characteristics of catch block. Okay, maybe a few minutes ago I discussed that these are the characteristics of try blocks and these are the characteristics of uh, cache block. I want to show this in in a program then <coughs> then you can understand this. So for instance, this is an example of a cache block. I will show you in one program then you will uh, and then finally block I will show you in a program. Okay, so the, it is a like it's format of try block. Okay, for instance, if you are putting some course over here that may might generate an exception. Okay, so then you can put multiple cache statements. Okay, you can put at least one cache state statement, one cache statement, or you can put multiple cache statements. So when any you know, exception occurs, it will take this first cache. If that exception matches with this exception arguments, then it will execute this block, and other the remaining cache will be skipped, and it will go to the final block. So if the first cache argument does not match with the exception type, then it will check for the second cache exception. If it matches, then it will go through this body. Cache body, okay, and then finally body will be executed always. So finally, your finally block is okay. So is default block. Like whenever you use uh, if else statement, you use else, not not else. Sorry, no switch statement. You use the default, right? So like that, that kind of default. But here the difference is that no matter your final, your, your exception happens, your dry block or cache block worker, your finally block will be executed for sure. For instance, I want to give the example of a finally block like as the uh, emergency lane. So no matter if there is an accident happens or no accident happens, people will always keep the emergency lane open, right? 
So this is finally block. Emergency lane is the finally block. So if you are in an interview, if you are asked to give an example of, it, of a, an exception handling in real life, give this example. Sorry? This one? I wrote this finally. I wrote this finally. Bro. What is this one? I will remind. No, I. If, if, I, if I'm in a car yes. and I need to get to somewhere quick, finally, so it'll go through. So you cannot. You cannot do. If you are not a, if you are not an, you are not, an a, not an emergency uh, enforcement people, right? Can you do that? No. <laughs> you will get ticket. <laughs> okay, but. Thank you for saving me from the ticket. Hmm? Thank you for saving me from the ticket. Okay, so that is another exception. Okay, that is another exception. So, exception inside exceptions. Okay. <coughs> so, so this is like try block. This is a try. So that means if an exception, if an accident happen, okay. So you are using, you are keeping multiple lanes in order to keep your way or freeway running, right? Okay, if you use multiple lanes, and then your finally block is your emergency lane. No matter your an accident happens or does not happen, your finally block will be executed. Your uh, what is that called? Your uh, emergency lane will be running, right? Okay. So now you are, you are everybody understand the exception. What is an exception? Exception is a runtime error. <coughs> then this error is an unexpected error. You don't know ahead of time that an exception will happen. And then if an exception happens, then you will have some precaution code. How to handle those that are called exception handling. Yes. You said that runtime exceptions were called unchecked or IO sections checked. I said error. So in the next class, I will discuss about uh, uh, checked and unchecked exception. Next slide. I have one more question. I said all exceptions under um, runtime and error classes are called unchecked exception. And then so are I/O exceptions checked? I/O is unchecked or checked? Input output. It should be unchecked. We will talk about that. Uh, so check. That you I will talk about that. I have one more class, and then in the next class, let us discuss this. I have okay. a few more. So we have a slide. If I finish this, then we can go to the here. Okay? okay. So uh, unchecked exception are those. Those are base class error or runtime exception. It has over there. Okay. So I will discuss this. This will be a test question. Okay. For check and unchecked exception, give example. For check and unchecked exception, okay? So, but we will have our next class to discuss this. How many slides do we do have? Okay, only a few. Okay, hopefully I will be able to finish in next class. Okay, so if I finish until this today, tonight, then I will be... I have a few more minutes, okay? So, let me give some programs. Okay, so I already have put my... Uh, this exception handling some programs like in my uh, CAC 1322 review. Okay, so in this uh, project under exception handling package, so the first one, first program I already ran it and it showed me a divide by zero exception here it is occurring okay so now how can we handle this exception we are getting an exception right so for instance i have this here divide by zero in which line it is getting this error you see that line number 10 you see that it is, it is if i click over here it is showing the line number 10 that means line number 11 will not be executed it is not showing my it is not showing anything. 
if I even I say hello world over here, it will not show up. If I say something about here, if I say something about here, it will not show up. Because the reason, although I don't have any error on this line, because my exception ha happens here, right? So program is my program terminated actually. But through exception handling, we want not to terminate my program. We skip, we handle this line exception wisely so that we can execute the remaining lines, the other lines. Okay, so let us see the next program. So another type of exception that happens is called Okay, so input mismatch. For instance, when you use system.in package that we will discuss uh, input output operation in our next week. So for instance, in this program you are asked to enter a character. Okay, but for instance, let me run this program. Okay. What happens here? Okay, so I am asked to input a character over here. So it says enter a character. Okay, so let me enter a character, any character F. Then it is fine. Right? So let me run this program and enter a non character. What could be non character? True, the boolean type, right? Okay, so it is getting only the first one. Okay, so let me run it again and then if I enter a number, what I want to see here. Okay, so what I have done over here. So even I am not entering a character, so that whatever I am entering, whatever I am not, even I am not entering a character, I have my cache block over here. So my cache block is doing my is, is doing my system dot out dot print line statement, and it is showing my character, even the first. Uh, uh, first character of a string, yes. I will tell that later. I will I will tell that later. Okay. So actually, this is an empty exception handler. So this is an actually it's an empty exception handler. Okay. So cache block is is I don't have any code over here. So empty. I will tell that that this is the exception. Actually, we cache exception using parameters argument. Okay, so uh, I will I will tell you with more programs. Let me go to other programs. Let us see. Okay, this is the same program that I showed the first time. That program has a divide by zero, divide by zero issue, right here. This program has a divide by zero here. So what, in my first program, I had my divide by zero issue over here. So what I need to do in order to handle this exception, I need to put this code, this line of code, within a try block. So within a try block, Okay, I am putting this line of code that may or might create an exception. And followed by my try block, I will use a cache statement. So in the cache statement, I have to create, I have to use an exception, 
exception this is object okay so for instance we can do something more i have not used uh, yet here for my exception hand handling for that instance we can do e dot you see there are some trace trace here uh, get track trace print track trace print track so that means it will show what kind of exception happened it can it can it can show i can use this or even i can use my any anything for instance this is my method these are my methods i'm putting over here okay and then for instance if i face that that exception i face that exception always okay, already so then what i am doing so there here i am getting this giving this message that value of d is undetermined so it says divided by zero so then what i am doing for instance i am doing here or whatever i do okay so for here I am to have this part. Okay, so here if I say e dot dot print track trace, it is showing me that what exception came here. But if I do not give give this one, if do not if I do not give this one. then you will see that i do not have this it, it does not show me any any string tra stack trace means stack is called when we use a method call okay stack is called so by using this exception type e dot track trace or print some this method we can actually show what kind of error was coming so but by having exception class or a yeah, cache cache block what are the benefit we are getting that we are able to run this code the code after the cache block we will be able to run this but we if we did not have this cache block so then in the first program we saw that this line were not executed right so having a cache block it help us to cache the exception and do something either show an error message or showing the track trace or do something and we still be able to run the remaining line support but if we the advantage of that if we have a try cache block then we will be able to run the remaining lines otherwise if i did not have this cache block then i did, would not be able to run this block for instance let me show you if i do not have this catch for instance if i do not have this catch okay actually for every try block we need a catch so this is why it is not going giving me it is not allowing me to run this okay so as the time is over so in next class i will show you uh, about uh, i will, we will discuss about uh, uh check the non check exception and i will show you how to create our own exception class user defined or customized exceptions okay thank you so much